Okay, so in this next video in the playlist on cardiovascular pathology, uh, we're going to continue our discussion of atherosclerosis. And in this video, what we're going to do is look at different animal models for atherosclerosis. And what you will begin to see as we develop through this playlist uh, is you'll begin to see how atherosclerosis and our scientific inquiry into atherosclerosis, it's a mess, basically. And one of the problems with it is that we have a whole bunch of different models, uh, animal models for atherosclerosis. And whenever you do an experiment uh, into atherosclerosis and you use the different models, they all give different answers. So it's a, it's a mess, scientific inquiry into atherosclerosis. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these different models that we can use, and in later videos we'll see the different answers they give when we ask different questions. So really it's fair to say that none of the animal our models are really that decent. Okay, so um, let's flip over the page and have a look at these different animal models. So uh, what we have noticed is that these atherosclerotic plaques, uh, they seem to result, you seem to have greater risk of getting atherosclerosis if you have a very, very high uh, blood cholesterol level, okay? And high blood cholesterol level is known as hypercholesterolemia. Hypercholesterolemia. Okay, so cholesterol is uh, this component of the blood that we've associated with uh, risk of getting atherosclerosis. So hypercholesterolemia. Emia means state of the blood. Hypercholesterolemia means too high correct cholesterol level in the blood. Okay, right. Uh, so there's two ways that you can get an animal. So basically... If we want to investigate atherosclerosis, then it would seem likely that we should look at animals which, too, have a very high level of cholesterol in their blood. And there's two ways that we can get animals to have a high cholesterol level in their blood. Either we can look at dietary hypercholesterolemia. So we can basically take an animal and feed it a really high uh, level of cholesterol in its diet. So we can you get... Uh, an animal that has dietary hypercholesterolemia, hypercholesterol, that should be cholesterolemia. Okay, and often we do this in the rabbit, so we feed a rabbit a very high cholesterol diet, and uh, we can then get a model of atherosclerosis, basically. Okay, Alternatively, we can get genetic hypercholesterolemia. So there are um, conditions where you can get very, very high levels of cholesterol just because certain uh, processes that, ge that generally happen in the liver are dysfunctional, basically. Hyperpol, hypercholesterolemia, cholesterolemia. Okay, so we can use uh, dietary and genetic hypercholesterolemia, and these are both done in rabbits. So we use genetically hypercholesterolemic rabbits, and we use dietary hypercholesterolemic rabbits as well. Okay, and we're going to see examples of experiments done on dietary hypercholesterolemic and genetic hypercholesterolemic rabbits as the playlist goes on. Other ways that you can model atherosclerosis are more direct. These are trying to put in place the cause that will then lead to the disease process, and you're actually trying to hopefully get a real atherosclerotic uh, plaques developing in these rabbits. Whereas, there are techniques which you can use to um, basically try and actually make your own atherosclerotic plaques. So you can take out an artery or something, or you can take an animal and you can try and induce an atherosclerotic plaque in its arteries. And one of the ways you can do this is, if you take the artery of an experimental animal, what you can do is put a silicon collar around the artery. And this is generally done... Um, uh, well, you put a silicon collar around the artery. So, let me show this. Okay, so, this in blue, this refers to a silicon collar around an artery that's the rest of this. So I'll put the artery in red here. So this is the artery. Okay, so you put a silicon collar that basically is going to be very, very tight on the artery. 
and that is supposed to induce uh, to induce a um, to induce an inflammatory response in that artery, so a silicon collar like this, okay, and it's supposed to lead to inflammation. And as we will see in later videos on atherosclerosis, inflammation is extremely important in leading to atherosclerosis. So this silicon collar induces inflammation and is one model basically for how you can build an atherosclerotic plaque in this artery. Okay, another way that you can build an atherosclerotic plaque in a prior healthy artery is by something known as balloon angioplasty. Okay, now balloon angioplasty is something that we actually use as a clinical treatment for uh, occluded coronary arteries. Okay, so when a coronary artery in the heart is very, very narrow, okay, so maybe it's had an atherosclerotic plaque, so let's draw one of these arteries, so let's say we have our artery here, and it's got some terrible narrowing here, some horrible stenosis, okay, so this is a stenosis, a stenosis is the fancy name for a narrowing in a tube, so this is a stenosed coronary artery, so this is supposed to be a coronary artery. Okay, right, so a treatment, a pretty um, common treatment now uh, for people with occluded coronary arteries like this is to put, use, do a balloon angioplasty. So what you do is you put a tube known as a cannula, a cannula is just the medical term for a tube, with a balloon on the end. So here's this balloon on the end. And initially the balloon is deflated. Now, uh, you might ask, well, how on earth do you get this cannula into the coronary arteries? Well, this is a surgical feat, and the answer is I don't actually know. What they do is um, they go in through the femoral artery, generally. Uh, so uh, the femoral artery is in the leg. So if I just draw a little picture of a human being here. So here's the groin here, the two legs. Okay, the femoral artery is basically on the anterior aspect of the leg running down here. So what they do is they use this artery, the reason being that it's very, very, um, it's um, very superficial basically. It's a nice superficial artery, so it's an easy one to get into. You don't have to cut through too much to get to it. So this is the femoral artery, okay? So let me just label it up, the femoral artery. So they, in, they get into this artery, they put in this tube into that artery with the balloon on the end. They then go up, so I'll talk about where the femoral artery comes from. So it comes from an artery known as the, the iliac artery. So this is the iliac artery. Iliac artery. And there is two iliac arteries, a left one over here and a right one here. And they join together, well they actually split apart. Well, they both come from uh, the aorta here, so this is the abdominal aorta, okay? And then you can follow the aorta back up into the thoracic aorta, up to the aortic arch, and then the first branch that comes off the aorta when it, when it comes out of the left ventricle, these are the coronary arteries. So that's how you can thread this tube, in theory at least, back up into the uh, coronary arteries. How they actually, you know, um, make it go all the way back up to the coronary arteries, I don't know. Well, but they somehow get it into these coronary arteries. Okay, and then what you do is you put the cannula into the occluded blood vessel, and whilst the balloon is deflated, it will go into this little gap here. So, how shall I draw this? Um, I'll draw the deflated balloon there now. Okay, so there's the deflated balloon. I'll draw the deflated balloon in a different colour. So in purple here is the deflated balloon. And then what you'll do is you'll pump air into the balloon. It will blow up, and that, the idea is that's going to widen the lumen. You then will remove the, the um, balloon and hope that that has now widened the artery uh, diameter. Okay, now usually what you find when you do this is that the artery, as soon as you remove the balloon, will just sort of shrink back down again. If not, instantly, it'll do it over a few weeks. Um, so it will reach the nose. So what we now usually do is we uh, put in the balloon, and the balloon has around it uh, a little metal cage that is initially not uh, fully, um, fully assembled. So it's 
very tightly sort of compressed metal cage initially, and then when the balloon blows up, it will press the metal cage out. The metal cage will expand with the balloon, and it will then um, it will then um, hold the artery open. Basically, the cage remains there. The cage is known as a stent. Okay, and you can then uh, deflate the balloon back again. The stent will remain assembled and holding the artery open, and then the uh, balloon can be removed. Okay, so that's a balloon angioplasty in actual um, coronary artery um, surgery. Well, I don't know if this is counted as surgery. It's a uh, balloon angioplasty. Percutaneous coronary intervention is actually what it's called. Percutaneous, this is the fancy name for it, percutaneous coronary intervention and the reason it's called that is percutaneous means through the skin and you're going in through the skin to get to the femoral artery coronary intervention and then in coronary intervention obviously you are intervening with the coronary arteries okay now however what we're talking about is taking a perfectly healthy artery that doesn't have a already existing atherosclerotic plaque and we're going to put one of these balloons in again. So we're going to put in a cannula with one of these deflated balloons here in purple and we're going to blow it up. And basically what's going to happen is this balloon is going to blow up in this artery and it's going to cause damage to the wall of the artery. So here the wall of the artery is already hugely damaged and all we're trying to do basically is force the, the artery open. We're not really caring about the damage we're going to do to the wall of the artery because it's already damaged hugely and to be honest more pressing is the, dam is the um, damage you're going to do to the heart if you don't uh, return the blood flow to it. Uh, so that justifies the use of these balloon angioplasties in this case. However if you do it on a perfectly healthy vessel you are going to damage the wall. Okay, uh, So that is going to induce inflammation in the wall of this artery and that then is believed to be an okay model for atherosclerosis because as we'll see atherosclerosis the starting event is believed to be that you cause some sort of inflammation it's believed that it's an inflammatory response basically in the wall of the artery so you need some sort of damage to occur to the wall of the artery and both balloon angioplasty and silicon collar mechanisms are going to produce that so these are our four major models that we're going to see uh, for uh, atherosclerosis that are, you, that are in animals, basically. And the problem is that none of them are really probably getting at what actually happens in humans. And they're all kind of giving different pictures of differing diseases that maybe have some relation to the human disease, uh, but atherosclerosis as a whole is a very messy field.